giving somebody a name rather than a number begins to create personality and identity and giving the council and the community a name. And so we built on that idea of Bighorn and began to really push for incorporation. We knew we could be afforded because of our big industry, and also the oil revenues, the burnt timber gas plant up north, and the Wildcat Hills gas plant. Well, Wildcat Hills is in Rocky. But the various oil and gas installations and the, the limestone installations were, would enable us to create, to do it. it they were concerned about our low population, but there are examples, not so much in Alberta. I think there are some, even in Alberta, there are some examples of lower populations governing themselves. And so in January the 1st, 1988, we became the MD of Bighorn. And there was a, a lot of, a lot of debate and gnashing of teeth and frustrations at the council level because uh, there was one school of thought that said, well, actually I should just, should just be a municipality unto itself, maybe with the valley, the Bow Valley, and, and not all of the ranch lands, because it's got a nice, compact, um, physical, physical size, and it's got these big taxpayers, Lafarge mostly, but also Steel Brothers and Bay Mag. And uh, they, but, but in the end, and, and there was, I think at, at that point we said, well, it's going to be the whole thing or, not, or nothing at all. Lorraine was a little bit unsure because she, she knew that the ranch, ranching interests were different than the, than the uh, industrial interests. But in the end, she agreed that we, we had a certain size now, so, so there's a certain momentum that gets created with, with what exists now. And in the end, they all agreed to go with the whole size. And then there was a big fight about, a debate, I should say, about how, how many votes each area should have. And we wanted seven councillors, and the government only would allow us to have five councillors. And there was a big fight about who, how do these five councillors, where is their wards? And I won't get into all the details of that, but that, that was all cause for much debate. And the, uh, but on January the 1st, 88, we had a municipal district with I think Lorraine might have even been the first chair, I'm not sure, the first read. I'm not sure about that. But, but the... Uh, yeah. I believe you're right. And uh, Don Tannis. <coughs> Peter Furman. Robin Slater. Anna McGregor. Those five people were the first council. Dennis Anderson was the minister. And he came down and the pictures still exist. And we had a big party. And uh, that was it. And that was the incorporation of the India Bighorn. And I was really pleased to be able to play a role in that. It was challenging and fun. But it wasn't just a one-person show. It was a whole bunch of people that... I did that. It must have been a very exciting time. Yeah. Where did you go from there? Well, two things. Can I digress a little bit? You most certainly can. Yeah, the, uh, the MD needed a building, and we had the Olympics, and the building that the MD now houses in was the executive uh, entertainment place for big shots. I think the royalty was at the 
at the uh, Olympic Games and so they had to have special bathrooms and everything set up in the in this place and we, we managed to acquire that. Some one of our ratepayers who was an employee of ATCO put the word in Don Tannis's ear, I think, that this building was up for grabs for us for a I think it was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or whatever it was. I forget what it was, but it was by today's standards not very much money. And uh, so we uh, hustled around, got a motion over the phone like in 24 hours and got a $75,000 down payment check cut and I drove it into Calgary and within two days or like a very short period of time of being told about this opportunity, we had a deposit and a contract for the purchase of that building and the move and the movement moving of that building. And then just before that was all finally concluded, Spruce Meadows wanted the building. And uh, they would build us a building just as nice. And but we we should give this building up. And I said, well if you are building a building just as nice, why don't you build your building just as nice? And let us <laughs> keep the one that we bought. And it wouldn't look very good for Spruce Meadows if they go back on a deal. And we managed to keep the building. <coughs> so the building does have some history. But then later on, I was asked to apply for a job of Assistant Deputy Minister in uh, the uh, for Alberta Municipal Affairs. And I uh, couldn't resist the career move and uh, applied. Was eventually offered the job after some little bit of negotiation. It was to be in charge of consumer, not municipal affairs, it was consumer and corporate affairs. So business registry type stuff and and uh, vehicle uh, more vehicle licenses and no not more vehicle licenses but registrations and uh, the uh, market the governing the marketplace the how to write act and uh, thirteen different pieces of legislation that I had to administer none of which I knew. So I, I was sort of a peer manager that was over, overseeing people that had the knowledge, which is a, which is a unique challenge to, to try to do. But we managed to survive. My family felt that they weren't ready to move, so I was, I was the guy traveling every weekend between Edmonton and, and Canmore. So you remained living here. Yeah, so we for three and a half years I drove back and forth just about every weekend. And then I decided, I had a couple of close calls on the highway and I, I'm pretty laid back and absent minded and I thought, well, if I keep this up sooner or later, I mean, my ticket's going to be pulled. So I quit and took the first job that came up, which was to be social services director for the Stony Indian Reserve. Talk about moving from the from a good, very nice office on the 20th floor of a high rise with your own executive assistant and all kinds of perks to the basement of what used to be an Indian house residence, fixed up by make work programs and uh, expecting to run the social services. I had romantic visions of doing what I had done earlier on in, on Mapan Island with, in a cross-cultural situation, but it was very difficult and no disrespect to the Stony people, they're great people, but I wasn't the man for the job and I ran for mayor. Mayor of? Canmore. Mayor of Canmore.
What year was that? 1992. 88, we incorporated. 92, I quit the ADM's job. In 92, I became mayor. And then in, uh, for a period of time there, I was working for the Sony Indians. I had to feed a family, and you know, I, I wasn't very good at a straight progression up the ladder. I always wanted to setting achievement goals, and then once they were achieved and running, thinking about what, what else there might be. What was next? Yeah. And so that, he said, and I was mayor, Canmore mayor for six years, two elections, and I had promised Marilyn that I would, we, we'd, in, the, in this whole process, Lafarge came to me, Peter Hearn from Lafarge came to me over lunch, and Lorraine was there as well, and said that I should be living in the MD. And I said, well, I've got a nice house in Canada, but, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that it makes any sense. And he said, well, we have a piece of land that we want you to buy. And I guess they had offered it within the company, and nobody was willing to pay the appraised value. And this was $50,000, and they, they uh, sold me the land for 50 grand, which is nothing today. And this is the land where you live now? Yeah, this is this property. Yeah. And we, we bought it in 83. We, we made the deal in 83, and then it took a while to negotiate access and a few things like that. But uh, that, that happened in the early 80s, like I said, so right when I was heavily involved with the MD. But we didn't move here until Oh, I told Marilyn that we would, I would only be mayor for six years, then I would take time off to build a house here, which is what we did. And then I didn't have a job, so I, so I uh, tried to do consulting, and I found that very awkward for me because I wasn't able to make things happen, I was only giving advice. And I'm more of an administrator or more of a person that actually wants to do the thing as opposed to giving advice about the thing. So I had a few unsatisfactory experiences as a consultant and then was hired back by the MD to be CAO in 2000. <coughs> so Paul had left, there was some financial issues that the MD had went through that were very difficult and wound up with criminal charges being laid against some people. Not Sam, but others. And in the full course of things, Sam wound up losing his job. Although it wasn't he that did any... He was, he's an honest, hard-working guy. And you came and filled that position? I came and filled that position. And uh, shortly, shortly after that, I think I did that position for about a year and a half, maybe a year, a year and a half. And then Camor's mayor, Camor's manager was uh, let go. And I, I didn't actually apply for that job. Well, I did apply for it, but after I was recruited, you know, they came to me. And it was a question of money and they had more money to pay. And, bigger operation, more moving parts, and so I did that job for five years. In the meantime, I wound up with a health issue that slowly crept up on me, and I'm still struggling with, which is, part, which is Parkinson's. And that makes it, made it for me awkward to manage a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a certain amount of excitement and enthusiasm that you have to generate, and, and uh, charisma is maybe not the right word, but, but you've got to try to fire people up and get them keen and keep them keen. 
I, I used to be, be able to do that quite well, but I think as with the progression of this Parkinson's condition, it's not quite the same. Eventually, I told counsel that I wouldn't renew my contract. And so, so in, 19, in 2006, I uh, terminated my contract March the 5th, 2006. And then, then I, I really didn't, I did some volunteer stuff. I sat on the social, uh, the children's board for the well, child welfare for this, for the province in the Calgary region and I also sit on this committee and I carry on my various hobbies. We've certainly had an exciting and uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Diverse careers? Yeah. Career? Uh, definitely not your 9 to 5 for 30 years at the same place. No. Eh? <laughs> I always thought, you know, people make a difference between public and private enterprise. And I and saying that you know private entrepreneurship is is the answer or it is key, but I think entrepreneurship can be public entrepreneurship, it can be private entrepreneurship. It, can, it doesn't private public differentiation doesn't have to be there. I mean there there are differences between private and public, but one can be just as innovative and progressive in the public sector as one can in the private sector. And you're certainly that. Um, you've told us a lot about some stories about your career. Um, just, I want to take one step back to when you were speaking about the uh, building for the, uh, the new building for the new MD of Bighorn. Right. Where did the ID of Bighorn have their administration prior to that building? In the provincial building in Kenmore. Huh. Yeah, that was there. Okay. But they made it clear to us that upon becoming an MD, we had to start thinking about our own building. Mm -hmm. And then this building that now exists fell into our hands. It was, we were totally excited. I know that they're thinking about looking for a new building now, but at the time it was perfect for our needs. Yeah. And, I, I, there's more, more people now. And, more facilities in there, so it's probably filling up. Did a good the solution at the time. MD Bighorn own the land where the building is now at that time, or the ID already own that land? No, I, th I think it was purchased from the old store owner. There was a building owner. There. there was a store and a gas station. Yeah. There. Okay. Um, you have told us lots of stories about uh, during your career and, and uh, as a volunteer. Uh, any particular one that was you found particularly rewarding for yourself? Well, the things that I feel quite proud about are the, and I'll go backwards, the most recent thing that was very exciting for me was this whole cluster of things to make extra move, to make the MD move forward and to guarantee the survival of extra, such as the settling of the squatters issue mm -hmm. and the settling of the sewer issue. I think those were significant events for Camp, for Akshar. And I was very excited about doing that. The going back a little ways, the uh, whole business of organizing around social services, especially the senior citizens, was uh, very heartwarming for me. It was, it was turned out to be very effective and it's still a powerful organization in the town. We also create, organized one in Banff. I haven't followed it as closely, but uh, that was a very satisfying thing. 
the whole issue of uh, managing without knowing, in other words, doing pure management and uh, still keeping the systems going, whereas the people that reported to you, you knew a lot more about the technical aspects of what you're doing than you did. It's, it's a challenge in being able to do that and communicating, but it was really significant. I mean, the, the mayor's job also was, I, was to me very innovative because I, well, I don't know if it was innovative, but I did, did things like radio shows and monthly radio shows where people could phone in and ask me questions and newsletters. And I had a thing that I called Walkabout, where I would just meet with groups of employees and find out what was shaking in their world and how could we make it better. And I'm sure there's also, also all kinds of imperfections, but those are some of the things that I feel proud about. Mm -hmm. Specific events, I, I just so much. I mean, I started telling you about, like up north, there, there's all kinds of nail-biting situations that that were very gripping. The uh, in the administration of the MD, there was celebrations along the way and that, that were satisfactory, but it's, it's the sewer and the survey that, that was the big deal, and the, and the incorporation. What do you think is uh, the biggest challenge for the management of the MD at Bitcoin today? I think, and this is a challenge for management, I, I think it's important for management to keep the valley at peace, to keep the, to keep the valley working, and to, to like I, I always had loyalty to Banff and I had loyalty to Canmore and I had loyalty to Bighorn, and, and they don't have to. It doesn't have to be a negative relationship. And sometimes we trend that way because an urban center and a rural center see the world differently, and some of that comes quite naturally. But it's really important to, from an administration point of view, to be working positively with between Banff and Canmore and Exxon. And I, I think that's one challenge. I think it's... I, I think the MD has actually done quite a good job of keeping the whole together. You know, like the fracturing between Ranchlands and, and the Bow Valley never really happened because people work hard at trying to make it work. Mm -hmm. And with a lot of goodwill, most things can work. Well put. Um, moving just a little bit away from uh, the career side of your life, what yeah. about the so social life in the MD of Bighorn and the Valley overall? And well, there's a, I mean, there's a, we, we were always very social. And uh, in the, when I was in the MD of Bighorn, a lot of it had to do with re relationships with the counselors. Lorraine Fraser would sit by her window and watch the world roll by on that one day highway and every once in a while she'd invite me over and she'd always have a chocolate cake and John, her husband, would augment that with a shot of dark navy rum. And uh, the uh, I was, I was on a weekly basis involved in some kind of social related interaction with Lorraine and her network. But as far as actually goes, a lot of that was channeled through Lorraine. Because she, she made it her business to work very closely with me and to 
and to make sure that I was on side with, with her with her and council's priorities. In the ranch lands, I had the same thing going with Don Tannis and, and the uh, McGregors, who are a great couple. I don't mind small places, you know. I, I think if I could have easily been a part of Akshaw and been a part of that scene had, had I lived there or had I been closer to that. As it turned out, I was never negative about the social scene of people in, in Akshaw. I always had a little bit of envy because, I, because they're so close-knit. They know each other, they all know each other, they all work together, they play together. And uh, in my case, I do, I do as well with my neighbors and friends and stuff like that. Socially, the valley is a great place.